In this video, I'm going to show you how to design and order die cut stationery for your wedding invitations. There's so many fun die cut options and shapes are so popular right now. It's a great way to make a punch and there are ways you can do it that are not super expensive or difficult to design. So I have this wedding invitation suite and I'm designing here in Adobe Illustrator. I have a free class on this if you're new to Illustrator, but I'll skip ahead for this video. So I have three different pieces and these are the standard sizes that I use for all of my wedding invitations, although of course it's variable. So our wedding invitation itself is five by seven. Our details card is what's called A6, four and a half by 6.25. And then our RSVP card is what's called four bar, which is three and a half inches by 4.875 inches. Our envelopes are gonna be the corresponding sizes for those. And the main thing when you're sizing out your invitations is make sure any pieces that need to fit in an envelope fit in a standard envelope. Because if you make the main invitation a random size, you might have trouble finding an envelope to fit it. And you might have to invest a lot of money to create custom and envelopes, which is not always cheap. And then when it comes to die cuts, the world is basically your oyster. You can cut pretty much any shape you want using either die cut or laser cut options. But if you want to stick with standard die cuts, that means that this the printer that you're going to use will already have that die created. So you don't have to pay for a custom die to be created. So what I like to do is go with printers that you know and that have an existing die library and try to choose your shapes from that die library. My absolute favorite printer is called Princewell. And if you use my link, they will give you $25 off your first order. So when you're in your ordering portal, you can actually go to need help here. It's gonna take you to their main page and you can click die cut cards. This is gonna give you all the shapes and templates that you need for choosing your shapes. Now available in these particular sizes, we have these seven shapes and then available in a little bit fewer sizes, but still some good sizes. We have the half arch, the circle and the arch. They're constantly adding new shapes. So you never know what's going to be here next time you check. And then you can download all of your templates right here in their template section. If you're in their ordering system and you want to see what options are available, you can simply start an order and select a flat card select your size. So A7 is the one that has the most particular die cutting options. And then once you get past this first page, there will be a tab called finishing options. You can skip directly to that. And then all of the die cut options available for that size, as well as pricing, they're 23 cents each, um, will be available here on that page. If you're looking for a circle, for instance, you would just select a square size and then any die cutting that you can do with that size is going to be available there. But these are the main sizes and shapes that you're going to see. I also have this creative cloud library. It's the stationer's creative cloud library that I created that has die cut templates from Princewell as well as a lot of other popular vendors that we use. So you can see which shapes are available from all of these different printers. So for instance, within the Princewell template section, you can see their envelope liner shapes and sizes, as well as all of your die cuts. So this is the easiest way for me to look through everything. Um, but if you haven't got this library installed, then you can always look on their main website. So let's see what we've got here. Our main invitation is going to be a seven. So we'll click on a seven templates and see our different options. We have arch, bracket, antique, double arch, double round, oval, rounded, scallop, ticket, wave. And then we also have the templates in here with the guides, which you may or may not need. Now, before I get started, I'm going to check out all of the different sizes. So this one was a seven, this one's a six, and this one is four bar. And as you can see, there's not an a six section. I believe they are adding these die cuts, um, but they aren't there currently. So for our A6 card, we're going to have to either go with a different printer or just leave that one rectangular. So I'm just going to choose to leave that one rectangular and only die cut the imitation and the RSVP card. So I'll look at the four bar templates in addition to the A7 templates. And what I'm finding is that they are exactly the same. So that's how I'm going to make my choices. And I think I'm going to choose to do the RSVP card as an oval and to do the main piece as a scallop. So I'm going to use the template with the guides 
for this one just to show you what that looks like. So if I center this up on my page and then I'm gonna send it to the back of my design and you can see there's some information right here telling you what is on the guides. So basically the red dotted line is the final cut size and the green line is your safe zone. And there can be a little shift in your printing and die cutting. So you wanna make sure anything important is within that safe zone. We might want to make everything just a tiny bit smaller on this particular design, just so it fits a little more cleanly within that safe zone. And then if you do have any designs that are bleeding off of the edge, you want to make sure they extend at least an eighth of an inch to outside of the final trim line. We don't have that in this particular case. And then before you are ready to print anything, you wanna make sure you delete that guide. When I'm showing these to my clients, I like to just use this template without the guide or you can delete all the other pieces from that guide or you can just use this option if you have the Stationer's Creative Cloud Library. So if I were to show this to my client, I'm just gonna use uh, just a little light stroke here. You can do red, you can do like a dark color or something so that they can see where that cut is going to be. They don't need to see the safe zone or any of those other lines. Now we're gonna leave the details card rectangular and then for the A7 card, we're gonna do a scallop. So I can see that scallop design is right there. And then another good option for these is just to paste them. So I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna add a new layer. That's called non-print, paste them back in place. And to make this actually non-printable, I will double click on the layer and unclick print. And that just ensures that I'm never going to accidentally print these guidelines because I don't want those to be printed and then have it cut. And then you can still see some of the guidelines. So these are here when I need them. And since they're on their own layer, I can designate them to not print. And also I can turn them off if I need to. Now you do the same thing for envelope liners. Those are also die cut. So we have our A7 envelope liner and that's what I've used to create this little mock-up. And I will add um, this guy. I'll just delete him or add him onto the non-print layer. And then if you do have anything that bleeds to the edge of the die cut, you wanna make sure you release your clipping mask before you send that off to print. If you're not sure about bleeds, I have another video that I will link below. The last thing we'll do before we're ready for print is choose our envelope colors. I'm gonna use my Creative Cloud library with this Princewell envelope color section. They recently added this chartreuse color, which I really like for this suite. And I'm gonna make the green on this envelope just a little bit darker. I don't always recommend trying to match your exact colors on your cards with your envelope because they're printed on different machines and that means they're going to provide slightly different results so using like a corresponding slightly darker color or something will make that not look like you accidentally screwed it up and then for this envelope i might use this candy pink i think that's kind of fun with the cactus or you could use maybe this fuchsia, which is kind of the color we were using here. Let's go candy pink, and then I'll use the fuchsia to match it, but again, I'll just make it a little bit darker so it feels like it was really on purpose, and because it's on a colored paper, it will print a little differently. Now, this looks really cute, and I can't wait to get it ordered. Let's just focus on the die-cut cards, which are going to be the imitation RSVP and the envelope liner itself. Before you print anything, you want to select all of your text, so you can click select all text objects, right click and create outlines. That's gonna solidify the text. So this is where you wanna go ahead and save a print ready version of your file because you absolutely wanna keep the editable version just in case you need it. And now this is where if you didn't have these guidelines on their own layer, you'd wanna make sure to delete them. I usually go through and actually delete that non-printing layer just in case. And now we'll save these individual art words. I'll just focus on these three for now. Number one, number two, and number six. So save as. Number one, I'm just gonna put a one liner. We're gonna save it as a PDF. And then we don't want all of our art boards. We just want art board number one. 
Now I always start with Illustrator default, uncheck preserve Illustrator editing capabilities. This just makes the file size a little smaller and you wanna make sure you have 0.125 bleeds. Again, if you don't understand bleeds, I have a whole nother video on it. We'll do the same thing with number two and number six. So one thing you'll probably notice here is we are just saving a rectangle at the size that we want the final piece to be. But when it is cut down with a die cut, it is going to be a little bit smaller than that rectangle. However, what we're going to upload to the to the principal ordering system is just that rectangle. And that's typically how it will work for any die cut printers. Some of them will require that you send the artwork with the die line on it, uh, maybe on a non-printable layer, or maybe they'll remove that themselves. Maybe you could send a file with it and a file without it. It'll just depend on your printer. And this is one of the reasons I love Printswell is because their setup is very, very simple. So when you're in their ordering system, we're just gonna start with exactly what we did last time, which is your flat cards. We'll start with our A7. I'm gonna select my stock paper, which is this 120 eggshell ultra white. We're only gonna print on the front, but you can print on the back also if you want. We'll select our quantity, let's do 100. Now you can use a variable print, which means there's something different on each page. This is something we'll use for printing um, escort cards, table numbers, if you, addresses on envelopes, etc. But for this job, we don't need that. And we will simply upload our saved PDF. At this point, if you click the wrong file, it will tell you it's the wrong size. So if you did accidentally save the file size incorrectly without bleeds or something, it will tell you if it is not correct. And now we have all of these different die cut options. So we just have to remember to select the one that we designed with, which is this scallop. You can also add a drilled hole or angled corners that wouldn't work on a die cut shape like this, for instance. So I would not recommend that. And then here's where we can add those um, envelopes that we talked about. For instance, there's that nice chartreuse color. And then we could add either CMYK or white ink printing and our liners. I'll go ahead and add our liners. And as you can see, uh, with liners, you don't have to select um, a flat card and then do the die cut. There is actually an option just for envelope liners. And it will already have that size selected. They are able to line their your envelopes for you. I prefer usually to line them myself, but sometimes I have them do it, just depends. So then before we add to cart, we'll make sure we have everything that we want. We have our flat card, we have the right paper selected, quantity of 100, you can see your design. And then we have our scallop die upgrade for 23 cents each, which is so nice because if we did this custom, we would have to pay for a custom die that could be like $300 or more. And then we would also have to pay for it to be run through the press. So when we use these standard dies from different places, we can really make a big impact for not too much money. We have our chartreuse A7 envelopes, and then we have our liners as well. So we'll add to cart. If we were ordering the liners by themselves, I just want to show you that we would just select this envelope liners tab right here. It's either a Euro flap or straight flap. And then the Euro flaps would have the exact size and die cut already in there. So all you would have to do is upload the file. You don't have to select the die cut on the finishing tab like you do for flat cards. Now we'll do our four bar RSVP card, right? And just as a reminder, they recently added some colored paper that they can print on. So black, blue, mint green, and new blue. And they can die cut those as well. They won't be able to die cut the double thick options. We'll stick with the white, get a hundred of these as well. And again, we have that die cut shape section. So I'll select an oval. Um, here's where you could grab your candy envelopes and print on them if you would like to. You can also line the cute little baby envelopes. <laughs> here's our RSVP card in the four bar size, 100 quantity. Make sure we selected the right paper. Our oval shape upgrade and our candy pink envelopes. Add to cart. Beautiful. Now we are ready to go and we're going to get a beautiful die cut scalloped invitation. Here's what one of those looks like and I'll put a picture of these on screen once they arrive. You can see the gorgeous scallop wedding invitation, our pretty chartreuse envelopes, 
and then our RSVP card with our pretty candy pink envelopes as well. Thanks so much for watching this video all about designing and ordering die cut invitations. There's a lot of different companies that offer this. So just check what their standard dies are because it's going to save you a little bit of money. And if you do end up using Principal, they're one of the most cost effective for these die cut invitations. And they have a lot of beautiful shapes in a lot of different sizes. If you use my link, you will get $25 off of your first order. And you can check out my playlist here with tons of other videos about about all the different capabilities they have. Thanks so much for watching. If you wanna become a stationary designer, I have all the tools you need to start, grow, and scale your business from pricing to Adobe tutorials to tools that will help with color print matching because we all know that's a struggle. I got a little bit of everything at the resources link below and you can book a one-on-one -on -one consult if you're not sure where to start.